What we have here behind me is what we call a gas tight sealable silo. This silo is what we use when we do a fumigation with phosphine and other fumigants. The reason we need it to be gas tight is that it needs to hold the gas in the silo so that we can control all the life stages of the insect. Um, often phosphine is used in an unsealed storage and we don't get proper insect control and we find that we just build resistance to phosphine. The way to know that this silo is actually gas tight before we do a fumigation is we do what we call a standard pressure test. You'll notice on the silo that there's a um, pressure relief valve and a little tubeless tyre inlet valve. We have a new standard now that we can use it as a benchmark in our industry, which is the Australian standard 2628. That is now the way that a grower can go to the marketplace and, and be sure that they are buying a product that is going to meet that standard and be gas tight for them. Now once we've done that, obviously we've, we've been able to buy ourselves a new silo that's gas tight. We still need to be sure that that silo will perform to that standard when we use that silo throughout its, its, its lifetime. And there's three important times that we need to think about when we do that. The first time is when that silo is put onto our farm and erected, it is actually gas tight and meets that five minute pressure test. We need then also to check that silo as we use the silo through its lifetime because there may be simple things like repairs or uh, replacement of rubber seals on the hatches in loading out loading points which will wear which will over time corrode or become brittle and so they're just things that are standard normal maintenance in a silo that we need to be sure that we maintain. It's important also that when we have a gas tight sealable silo that we do an annual check on it. Once we've checked all of that, we then pump air into the silo and we look at the difference that we create in the oil bath in the pressure relief valve to check that whether the silo is sealed. So we need to get an inch of difference or 25 millimetres in the oil height in the pressure relief valve. For silos that have been bought since March 2010, the Australian standard is that we need to have a five minute half-life. So it needs to take five minutes for it to fall from 25 millimetre to 12 and a half millimetres. Prior to that Australian standard coming out this March in 2010, older silos on the farm, it is more than adequate that they meet a three minute half-life. Now sometimes you may find that your silo doesn't meet that five minute half-life and so you need to then go around and have a look at where there might be some leaks in the silo and typically they will be around the hatches, around the bottom plate perhaps, if you have aeration then around the inlet from the fan. And what we do is we get some soapy water and a squeezy bottle and we just put more air into the silo so there's a, a small amount of air inside there and pressure and we spray the soapy water onto those um, areas around the hatches, the lids and just see whether we see any bubbling coming out which will indicate that there is a problem with that seal there and that we need to either replace the rubber or we may need to look at the way that the hatch is being locked down so whether the springs, if we have spring lockdowns, have become weak and we need to replace those as well. The way we, to ensure that we get a, a true reading is that we do the test at a time of day when it's either pre-dawn so that there's not a lot of fluctuation in temperature or if we aren't going to be doing it then, then certainly some sort of around 1 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon when we find that temperatures tend to be relatively stable. We don't want to do the test when we have unstable weather conditions and that means when it's windy when we might have uh, heating and cooling in the daytime, whether it's early in the morning or late in the afternoon, or whether we have um, clouds passing over the, the sun and, and causing the, the temperature to cool down as that happens. Let's go over the key points of a gas tight sealed silo. To be sure it's gas tight and sealed, we need to do the pressure test. That then ensures that that silo conforms to the new Australian standard for sealed gas tight storage. We need to maintain it regularly, we need to check it annually as a minimum in doing the pressure test to be sure that it is gas tight and certainly doing that test prior to every fumigation we do in that silo. Of course you can get all of the information we've talked about today on the GRDC fact sheet pressure testing sealable silos. The information is also available on the GRDC extension project website www.storedgrain.com.au so we've all seen how easy it is to do the pressure test, so let's get out there and test the silos we've got on our farms.